Right, good afternoon. My name's Colin Thompson. I'm the programme leader for BA Fashion, and Fashion Studies, I should say, here at the University of Derby. And with me today I have Nat and Becky from the National Army Museum, who are going to talk a little bit about what they do and what the museum does and how they're collaborating with us on a level five project that's year two. Um, over to you, Becky. Um, I'm Becky. I'm a curator at the National Army Museum. My official title is Public Information and Outreach Curator. Um, and Nat is Senior Access. Senior Access and Outreach, and outreach Curator. Um, so we both work in the Collections Division at the Museum, which is in Chelsea in London. Um, and not only do we work with objects, um, you know, conservation, display, exhibition, but we also um, we also work on particular outreach projects. So predominantly we're working with artists, we're working with groups of veterans and pensioners and different groups um, to look at how the museum can work in new and diverse ways and open the collection properly to new audiences. Um, about a year ago we were restructured so that Nat, who used to work in what we call the Uniform Badges and Medals Department, which is partly why her expertise is as it is, um, became an access curator and I did the same. I came from a fine and decorative arts background. So that's what brings us here today, I think, um, and why we'd be relevant for, for Derby. Great. Um, can I ask you, Nat, mm. um, what do you think can be gained from the National Army Museum working with the University of Derby on uh, projects of this kind? Well, what we see is that essentially this is a dialogue and we want the college to be working with us, not just this year or next year, but long term. And we want to open up to the university um, an amazing collection of over 80,000 uniform items yeah. um, from collars and coats and knitwear and underwear um, to coaties and, and it's everything. It's, it's an amazing, amazing collection. Um, but it's essential to us, I think, that we know that, yes, London is the basis of, uh, of the fashion industry. Yeah. Um, Boris Johnson said this, Dylan, Dylan Jones <laughs> said this. Um, but we want to bring our collection out of London and open it up to colleges like right. yourself. Um, so, to, you know, everybody can share this amazing archive that we have. So what would you like to see at the end of the project emerge um, um, in terms of uh, student benefit? I think there's probably three key ways that we think our involvement could work and, and one is looking at the collection um, on, a, on a bespoke and individual level, working with particular items or particular themes and we can help curate and facilitate that. Um, secondly, um, on, a, on a sort of group level we can, um, we can provide uh, expertise, information about the collection, themes and topics um, from everything from how the red coat developed to um, why it was important to keep warm or you know, other mm. kinds of things that spring out of looking at costume in this way. Um, and thirdly, long-term digitisation of the collection is, is a massive priority for us and so research and digitisation can go hand in hand and, and that brings you know, a historic collection to life in, in new and diverse ways and especially with contemporary fashion voices um, in the mix, I think, I think that collaboration could, could run mm. and run. And also we want to learn as well from the students. We're coming from a um, historic um, point of view with our mm. collection, which is uh, you know, it's a military collection. Um, but to also, as I say, get this dialogue from your students to say mm. how things were put together and to show us um, how things were constructed, which we may not be aware of. So it's very, very much a two-way learning process mm. right. um, you know, for us as well as the students. Great, thank you. Um, this project aims to allow um, established and emerging notions of heritage mm. uh, to converge from quite disparate streams of experience on an individual level and a, and a sort of collective level and culturally and creatively um, and also from an academic uh, perspective. What do you think from your perspective, um, what benefit and value do you think this, your, kind, your, your specific involvement uh, um, as representatives um, of the, the National Army Museum can bring to this kind of diverse mix? I think um, the idea of heritage brings, well, certainly for me, conjures lots of different things, including um, brand, uh, British and British, uh, Britain and Britishness, um, even Anglomania, um, the ideas of sort of 
what we as, as Brits like to think of as ourselves and how we're perceived around the world, mm. as well as ideas of family heritage, perhaps um, how, how things might be passed down, how things are passed yeah. down into a museum collection, how yeah. museum collections look after mm. things that are old, <coughs> to um, ideas of made in Britain and you know, um, ideas of how propaganda might have um, influenced some of that development. And so there's a huge amount of relevance and mm. I think it chimes massively with the collection that we have. Mm. Um, not only because it's an old collection and we're looking at, you know, we're looking at 300 years worth of, of changes in military costume which inevitably dictated civilian fashion and how civilian fashion developed. Um, but also looking at fabrics, colours, um, materials, wall tweed, um, all of that was kind of uh, based on military need and utility. Mm. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, that there's, this, there's this whole revival in the sort of keep calm and carry on type um, mm. design and graphics and uh, clothing and everything. And that, that it has been something that's been prevalent in Very terms much so. of our museum research, probably. Absolutely. I mean, the military has always been at the forefront of yeah. fashion. It, yeah. it, it had an amazing influence on civilian fashion right from, you know, the 1760s onwards. Um, and I think it's important to see that development of how it did influence civilian fashion. Um, you've only got to look at Beau Brummel and the Prince Regent and going back to those those people to see yeah. the influence Absolutely. that was, was had. And we were, we were laughing earlier about this uh, document that was released about the 10 heritage uh, iconic. Thing, iconic heritage things in, in Britain and actually about eight of them are military um, based so Wellington boots. from wellies to um, trench coats to you know the suit the suit <laughs> right. to reveres yeah. and turnbacks yeah. and uh, most of it it comes from in fact that intersection between military and civilian mm. life and that dialogue that has existed for 300 years and I think it's important to kind of root contemporary research in some of those ideas and it's difficult to access those ideas because a lot of those changes exist in army orders from mm. 1800 that's kind of boring and dry but mm. actually it's about bringing some of those ideas to life in in practical examples mm. of of those changes why changes occurred as well mm. you know how that influenced um fashion as well what made things change why clothing had to change um that's important i think and, and we have an amazing source of some of that. absolutely and without understanding the past you can't really design for the future. You've got to know where things came from, yeah, how absolutely. they evolved. Yeah. Um, so and it's about rooting that contemporary dialogue and that contemporary development in mm. in places that that are kind of surprising and unique. So do you do you find um, that when people do access your resource and use um, um, and are exposed to your archives, mm. that they are often surprised by what they find and the kind of uh, history oh. behind things and Definitely. how things develop and Absolutely. how it connects to you know, modern life and modern products. Absolutely. Know. I mean, they're always astonished. I remember the first um, lecturers and students who came, they just looked at it and just, we had no idea, no idea this collection was based here in London mm. in a military museum. It, right. It's astonishing because it's a collection of clothing you know, forget the military side, it's, it's actual clothing patterns mm. f over 300 years and they're, they're always amazed that they didn't know about this before mm. um, and that it, is, it is accessible, it is there waiting to be used yeah. and looked at. And it is about accessing that expertise as well, it's about accessing that knowledge which is rooted in the collection for us and um, Nat amongst others has huge expertise in that so um, it's about the collection and it's about centralising that collection but it's also about yeah. kind of gaining understanding and knowledge about the history mm. of fashion and the history of clothing, mm. which um, you know, is, is a slightly different thing, but um, really enlivened by looking at the real thing and looking, and there's nothing like looking at an original source. Mm. I agree with you. We had a student from um, the Royal College of Arts and he came to look at a coatee, and um, he said he, it was just amazing just smelling the item because mm. it had a, a strange odour to it of age and I, lo I love that idea that yeah things kind of hold meaning because the, they've yeah. been touched and worn and and that's passed down as well so that's yeah. another idea of heritage maybe that yeah. he was the heritage of things blown being away. worn. Mm. absolutely absolutely and the whole also we have a very very big indian army uniform collection yeah. and you can see the cultures crossing over how the british army officers were copying the indian army officers right. and how the changes right. um there moved and that's actually quite fascinating mm. to see yeah. and um as well as the, uh, some of the more technical things like the mm. development of uh, khaki and camouflage and why it developed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. So on the subject of heritage, because mm. that's what 
underpins the project um, and the purpose behind the project is to explore heritage. Mm. Um, in the commercial world, um, heritage is often manipulated and packaged uh, to apportion va value to products. Mm. Um, what do you think students can learn from interaction with your archives about heritage and how it's manifest in other ways beyond mm. you know what what they, they experience in the commercial world in their everyday lives. Yeah, I think I think it comes back to that idea that heritage can be interpreted in a huge variety of ways, and I think in terms of uh, British Army and, and the British soldier, which is what we try and centralise in in the work of the museum, um, heritage can conjure much long, more long-standing ideas than, than mm. perhaps what they might see in, in pop culture. But, but certainly that pop culture and that, um, that use by design and um, design, uh, the design sector um, has a fundamental value for historical collections and vice versa. So we've had a, a huge amount of um, input over the years into um, design collections and designers coming in to see the, the museum collection, which might not right. be that obvious in a mm. shop or a commercial environment. Mm. Um, but often has played a really vital role. Mm. Um, it's the quality also of, of yeah. the, in a sense, the product. What we have is the is the uniform, mm. and when you look at the quality of the how it's been made, yeah. the cloth, the colours, the way it's been put together, mm. um, that it's really important because it's, it just screams at you, you know, um, quality and, and and heritage. It's, yeah, I mean, it yeah. is our heritage. It's everybody's heritage. Yeah. There's a whole there's a whole kind of dialogue around that idea. So the idea of quality and how things can last or not last, which is vital for kind of talking about the commercial sector now and people mm. talk about how you know how um, durable or not clothing can be now um, and there was this you know some of the key um, uh, designers who who designed for kind of a wartime effort or the or even the army oh, right. um, okay. had this had this dialogue going on even then so mm. um, I think that some of that you know plays out in the collection um, and I also think that it's about identity and it's about kind of British identity and British identity which is even for the civilian development of fashion mm. tied um, even if it's in a kind of hidden way to, to military development so yeah. Um, we yeah sometimes we like to say that actually the collection is about it's about the human condition through a lens of a military rather than mm. about the military um, mm. it tells us mm. lots more about how we got to it today does. in terms of fashion mm. more generally I think yeah, yeah. the social aspects of the times yeah. when this was why it was cut like that why it yeah. was and there's like always that. been that dialogue that mm. intersection between civilian and military um, mm. clothing and, mm. and identity of uniform and how what that does to mm. you as an individual is you know a hugely interesting topic alone yeah like precisely that. I mean I was thinking about that word identity with, mm. whether it be within a national context or an international context mm. or an individual context uh, yeah individually, or an individual certainly. context you know, certainly yeah um, what was utility what was yeah what, what was what's best? decorative what's function what's and and those things are to some extent a bit veiled I think because mm. they exist so much in um, the commercial sector you know, the idea of epaulets, and that exists so much, of the idea of yeah. um, reveres on a coat, mm. military coats. I mean, that's been functional, every it? year absolutely, that comes down. Absolutely. But actually nothing was, you know, epaulets, it started because in case someone sliced down on your shoulder. So, I mean, it's, it's kind oh, of amazing. Right. You know, mm. it was, it was early armour. I mean, that's, that's right. Nothing was really mm. by chance with military clothing. It was mm. all done for a reason. Mm. Everything mm. there looks decorative, but is for a reason. Mm. And uh, that's important, I think, to find out when you're looking at the clothing. And what I find particularly interesting is the fact that some of these functions were not necessarily um, limited to how the um, to to um, consider considerations about where or the performance of the fabric in relation to accessories or um, anything like that. The mm -hmm. the idea that an epaulette was put on a shoulder to essentially save your life. Yes, yeah, a sword um, cut, yes. Yeah, it takes it into another dimension. Absolutely. And I think and that can be quite, um, that can truly enrich uh, uh, the creative process. Absolutely, this, this I, think, of I think working through some mm. of those ideas about um, why? why you're putting something mm. into a design, mm. and whether that, that is to reference decoration or indeed to reference the fact that it was used as a sort of early protective wear. Mm. Early armour. Um, mm. Or late armour, but mm. early protective well, wear. Well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, all the, all the lovely um, metal lacing and frogging down the front, again, was used to mm. deflect a sword blow. 
Um, but you might not realise this when you look no. at it. You might just think, oh, that looks as fancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've learned something today. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, well, to finish off, archive resources are, are fundamental. They're a, they're a fundamental resource. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think, in my experience, I've uh, observed a um, lack of understanding from um, looking at the student experience and mm. their interaction with archive mm. resources mm. of how fundamental mm. um, they are mm. to um, you know, understanding the past and understanding the development mm. of things in general, product mm. in general, mm. and here we're talking about fashion. So do you have any practical advice to give students on how best to use yes, archives absolutely. to support their learning? Absolutely. I mean, research underpins everything. Mm. You have to be able to research and understand how a garment got to where it is. You've got to know the past and, and how it is put together, really. And, um, and as, it, as we've just said, it dictates your own methodology. Of course. So methodologies yes. from the past and research into the past can, can help you so inordinately in comparison to, say, just using online resources. or mm. um, and, and I think sometimes it is hard to, to know how to approach archives, how to approach museums. Well, they can be daunting and they, they can, can be intimidating. Daunting. And we don't and want they to be like... can be kind like of dusty mm. as Absolutely. well and boring. Yeah. Um, but I think we've, we've worked really hard to invigorate the collection in that way yeah. and, and think about why it's important for us as well as a museum mm. to kind of gain new voices and gain new interpretations um, mm. through working with young people and students and, mm. and um, the academic sector more generally. Mm. Um, because, you know, we're all kind of out there for the same reasons. We're all in the creative industries and we all want to, um, you know, preserve um, mm. our heritage. Mm. Mm. There's that word again. Mm. Um, but <laughs> but, um, mm. but bring it, make it relevant because it will mm. inevitably otherwise not play a part in, you know, Absolutely, design. absolutely. Um, and to look at collections, to go out to museums, to see mm. what's on display. Mm. Um, if you want to come and see things, make an appointment, obviously, and we can show you. Mm. But I would say to people, get yourself a tape measure mm. and some good cotton gloves. <laughs> right, okay. Good white cotton gloves, because okay. they are really, really essential for when you're looking at items and handling items. Right. Yeah. Um, and just don't be afraid to ask questions and... and get in just, touch with people. Yeah, and enjoy your research and, mm. and, and be relaxed with it and get excited by it. Um, and just, you know, yeah. if you get to see an item, draw, sketch, get your ideas down. Um, it's, not, it's not just about looking at books. And I think people, no, you, people you know. do, you know, it's hard when you're in a university environment to kind of get out of the library um, and think about research in other ways because, you know, there are time pressures and so on. Mm. And access is difficult. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. going to be difficult. But it's about three, find, asking, question, asking the right questions and finding out how to do it. But I think, you know, we're, we're always so pleased when students get in touch with us and ask to come and see things because mm. I think it does set you apart as well. It does mm. set you apart. It does inform your ideas in a way that mm. you probably can't even really understand even mm. when you're embedded mm. in it. It, mm. it kind of can bring new things to your research without you even realising it, I think. Mm. And, mm. Okay. And, it's, and it's fun. It's really fun. It is fun. It's fun for us too. And there's nothing nicer than having a student with us looking at, say, a coty and telling us, um, you know, little bits about seaming and, and oh, that's interesting, and how yeah. that was done. And I thought, yeah. oh, I never noticed that before. Yeah, yeah, with fresh it, eyes. Yeah. Totally, mm. you know. Um, but the research bit, I think, is, is the best bit. I think it's, it's really exciting. But, you know, um, we just would like people to be, you know... Uh, engaged, in engaged. Engaged and be willing to ring and get involved. But and that's I, why we're here. I think, you know, if we're, if we're kind of working in this collaborative way, it'll be, mm. it'll be uh, achievable. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Nat, and thank you, Becky. Thank you, Colin. Thank you.